We have a shortened dateline for you tonight. Boo! You suck! Uh, sorry about that, but I have an important election coming up in eight days, and we have some snarky news. Dateline. Headline. Breaking news with 44 caliber, hollowed point, snark. Dateline. Maryland. In what might be described as a sign of things to come for the upcoming midterm elections, the Democrats just might be in deep doo-doo. <laughs> <laughs> On the ballot for the Democrats for governor is Anthony Brown. He could be the first black governor in the state's history, and with the fact that Maryland has two times as many registered Democrats as Republicans, Brown should be a shoo-in, right? Right. Wrong. Don't! While the notoriously unreliable polls do have Brown up by seven points in the latest poll, that has come down from a previous 17 points two weeks earlier. But the internal polls must be much worse for the Brown campaign because there is a smell of desperation in the air. Ew. It smells like pee. Instead of touting their candidate, who, by the way, was waxed in all three debates between Brown and the Republican Larry Hogan, the Democrats have pulled out all 52 from the deck of race cards. You disgust me. The Democrat Party is in such a sad state, their only talking point in Maryland is that in electing Brown, they can make history by putting the first African American in the State House. Hmm. Where have I heard that moronic selling point before? Uh, you... But, 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 but let me, let me, let me just... And, uh, what's happened, what's happened? By recalling Democrats' racist past, and trying to pin it on the Republicans who fought for civil rights, they have sent out a despicable mailer to black voters. It shows a picture of Martin Luther King, a Republican by the way, and it says, quote, it's been a long journey, unquote. Then it has a picture of a sign that says, colored waiting room. Oh my God. Of course, those signs were created by Democrats. That's a fact, yeah! And it also says, quote, they've placed roadblocks in our way at every turn, unquote. Of course, the they in they've were also Democrats. That's a fact, yeah! And to cap it off, they show a picture of racists marching against civil rights, Democrats marching against civil rights in the 1960s. That's the fact, yeah! That's a fact, yeah! If a bluer than blue state has to stoop to playing the vile race card in the governor's election that for all intents and purposes should have been a cakewalk, this just might be a telltale sign that that Republican wave the mainstream media has been trying to suppress just could wipe out the left and end their reign of terror on the United States and put this country one step closer to belonging back to the American people and not the scum of the earth progressives. Amen, brother. Amen. Dateline. Flashback. As those of you who have read my article on the News Ninja website about Harry Reid's bloodless coup of the United States government, you are familiar with the crook from Nevada. So let's go back in time to the early days of Harry Reid's criminal activity. This is important to let the nation know who has been running and ruining the Senate and all of Congress for the last seven and a half years. Yes. By blocking most of the legislation for purely partisan reasons. Anarchist. When Slimy Harry was in Las Vegas and head of the Gaming Commission, he was in charge of handing out gaming licenses to the casinos. As most of you know, in the 1970s, a majority of the casinos were run by the Mafia. So as head of the commission, Harry Reid was the one who handed out licenses which were not supposed to be going to anyone who with mob ties or anyone who had a criminal record. One of these underworld figures from the Chicago mob that was in the shadows of several Vegas casinos was a hood named Joe Augusto. Why do I deserve this generosity? The FBI was investigating him and had taped Augusto's phones and home. Augusto was caught on tape saying, quote, we have Mr. Cleanface in our pocket, unquote. 
after his arrest by the FBI, Augusto explained to them that Mr. Clean Face was in fact now Senate Majority Leader Harry Reid. Wow. 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 An unusual Democrat cover-up style. Jimmy Carter's Attorney General whitewashed Reed from any wrongdoing, even with corroborative evidence that Harry should have been in a 6 by 6 cell for 10 to 20. Now the reason for this Dateline flashback is to get the word out as to what a rotten to the core crook Reed is and that America can't afford two more years of his dirty dealings polluting DC with him putting party before country. Domestic terrorists. Dateline, Atlanta. At what can only be described as the quintessential liberal hypocrisy in the media, CNN has stooped to a record low. No, I'm not talking about their ratings. That, by the way, are in the toilet. What I'm talking about is their brazen disregard for conservative women all the while propagating the false Democrat talking point of the right's supposed war on women. You disgust me. Former vice presidential candidate Sarah Palin's two daughters were assaulted in Anchorage, Alaska, and this CNN anchor somehow finds it funny. Okay, I'm just going to come right out and say it. This is quite possibly the best minute and a half of audio we've ever come across. Well, come across it a long time anyway. A massive brawl in Anchorage, Alaska, reportedly involving Sarah Palin's kids and her husband. It was sparked after someone pushed one of her daughters at a party. Here now is Bristol's recollection of how that night unfolded. So sit back and enjoy. My Tell little me what sister happened. comes up to me and says, some old lady just <laughs> pushed me. She just hit me. Okay. Oh, no, no one's going to touch my sister. Where was this at? So we were in the limo. I walk back. Did you push my sister and some guy gets in my face, pushes me down on the grass in front of everybody? Come on, you. I think that long beep was my favorite part. You can thank me later. While Ms. Costello isn't the bitch slap of the week winner, our female producer wanted to try a theory out on CNN's latest Bimbet anchor. Come on, what's the matter with you? How does that feel, Carol? What's the idea? Isn't that a hoot? Quiet. And that last one is for your laughing in the face of an assault on two women, one being a 20-year-old. You disgust me. Bet you might have reported the story differently if it was Chelsea Clinton being pushed around by a Tea Party member. That's the fact, Jack! You would think that since their ratings keep falling at CNN, and Fox News ratings keep setting records, they might get it through their liberal mush brains that people are sick of their liberal bias and hypocrisy. Absolutely, positively, unequivocally. But as usual, leftists aren't as smart as they think they are. Am I right? Right. So when you want to speak with moral authority on women's rights, Ms. Costello, pass that story on to another female anchor at CNN who has at least a shred of credibility left on women's rights. Like, say, Anderson Cooper. This one deserves the new and improved two snaps, a twist, and a kiss. And that's Dateline for this day, October 27, 2014.